Now we move on to the toast to the lassies. Tonight, giving the toast is Rod Strachan, a chartered surveyor, us architects are definitely outnumbered, uh, born and educated in Edinburgh, uh, and before joining the expat lifestyle, uh, was director in charge of uh, Edinburgh office for the international company Gleeds. Uh, he came to Qatar working alongside Ron, might have a matching suit, um, and uh, to came out here to deliver the World Cup stadiums for the Supreme Committee, but now works for KEO uh, on their education city and Sidra Medical Facilities. Um, he's married with two kids, loves rugby, and uh, it's a jambo. and lassies, Rod Strachan. giving a toast to the lassies in Doha, Qatar, she replied. Sorry darling, you've never appeared in any of my wildest dreams. <laughs> so, good evening ladies and gentlemen. Um, when our new treasurer, uh, Ron McKinnon, asked me if I would do the lassies, uh, <laughs> I was somewhat perplexed. I mean, given the talent on show, what a kind and generous offer. Keep it short, he said. No problem in that department. There's a lot to go through. What? Blimey, Rob. I didn't realise the treasurer had that in their gift. Who knew this sort of thing went on in the inner sanctum of our revered society? I mean, it probably happens in Thailand. It almost certainly happens in Glasgow. He continued, what with the other speeches and the jigging and the just, oh, 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 toast to the lassies. Okay. So it's a delight that I stand here being only required to perform for seven minutes. <laughs> Firstly, it's remarkable how the men have managed to complete another punishing week at the office and scrub up and still be able to get their ladies here on time. Well done, chap. <laughs> and whether you brought your wife, girlfriend, mistress, or a combination, as I see some up, <laughs> at the same table. You're okay, guys. I know, I know the drill. I know the drill. No names, no names. Ah, uh, Bob Blair. <laughs> uh, I thought I asked for cardio. It's actually Tobin Mori. No names. That should keep the chat cool at those tables, although the look will no doubt be in evidence, and we might come back to that later. For those who know little of Mr. Robert's love of the lassies, especially his wife, Jean Armour, as Ron, Ron mentioned earlier, with whom he had nine children, it's the reason why thousands of these nights being held all around the world have a toast to the lassies. And because all is fair in love and war, the lassies have the right to, uh, to reply. And we'll hear those extremely kind words about us, gentlemen, uh, from Kay shortly. The great Robert Burns' relationship with women is a confusing one. Despite being incredibly promiscuous, 
it was not purely a physical pleasure. Burns appears to genuinely have adored women. In his work, he mentions by name a number of women, and his declarations of love are still some of the most famous ever written. Oh, my loves, like a red, red rose that's newly sprung in June. Oh, my loves, like the melody that's sweetly played in tune. As fair art thou, my bonny lass, so deep in love am I, and I will love thee still, my dear, till all the seas gone dry. Till all the seas go dry? That's a long time. This guy's in it for the long haul. <laughs> and speaking of declarations of love, most of us, since Burns, have been inspired by the lasses in our lives. Some of us have poured our hearts out into the beautiful lyrics we've all come to know. All You Need Is Love by Paul McCartney. How Wonderful Life Is Now You're In The World by Elton John. Oh, okay, so that's debatable if it's about a woman, but... <laughs> and of course, you're the first, the last, my everything by the late, great Barry White. In a period of just 11 years, Burns is known to have fathered at least 13 children by at least five different women, and all without the help of Tinder. <laughs> but, grant, granted, he was a Scot, so had an immediate advantage <laughs> with the ladies, but, but it was quick work indeed for any man. And by all accounts, again, as Ron has mentioned, the women were good looking, desirable, going by the names of, of, such as Handsome Nell and Anna with the Golden Locks. Burns could not have attained the status he has for so long were it not for the fact he was surrounded by remarkable women. They raised him from the man he was to be the iconic Scotsman whose poems have rung down the ages. It held them very dear to his heart and looked at them as a source of comfort, a source of inspiration and a source of strength. Today, we mere men continue to be in their thrall and these attributes, especially when most of us are far from family and close friends, sustain us as we work on some of the world's most amazing projects, and for that unwavering support, we are truly thankful. I mentioned the look earlier. Every man here knows what I mean. But just imagine the one that was waiting for Tam O'Shanter on that fateful night. Here's our hero. On his way home on his trusty camel, um Meg, admittedly stopping off at the Rose and Thistle, as you do, and while he's being chased over Hill and June by a bunch of deranged witches and the devil himself, what's his missus up to? Kate, just sitting at home, gathering her brows like gathering storm, nursing her wrath to keep it warm. You can almost see the foot tapping, can you? Now, I mean, ladies, it's just a couple of beers. You know, it's not as if he left for work and forgot to ensure the VPN was working. And, you know, and, and you missed catching up with loose women and strictly club dancers. Now, I can vouch that is a sin. And had my wife been a better shot with a frying pan, probably a mortal one. But as Burns knew, that us men, for all our faults, would always be in awe of our women. As the second verse of So Ye Bonnie Leslie goes, to see her is to love her, and love her forever. For nature made her what she is, and never made another. So in closing, with masterpieces such as A Fond Kiss and My Love is Like a Red Red Rose and so many others, it's easy to see that it was the lassies more than anything who ignited the genius in Burns, resulting in, in him being regarded universally as one of the great romantic poets. I suppose his devotion to the fairer sex can be best summed up in the last lines of Green Grow the Rashes Away. Old nature swears the lovely dears, her noblest work she classes low. Her prentice hand she tried on man, and then she made the lassies go. So tonight, gentlemen, the definition of which is a man who never forgets a lady's birthday, but never remembers her age. <laughs> I, th I think we can safely conclude that the lassies today are just as difficult for us men to understand <laughs> as they ever were for once, and every bit as lovely. Please, 
charge your glasses and join me in toasting in the spirit of Robert Burns, the lassies in our past, the lassies in our present, and who knows, the lassies of our future. <laughs> to the lassies. Thanks, Rod. That was uh, fantastic. A great insight into the, uh, the lassies.